We've got Dan Ives on Tesla's trajectory and him explaining something that he thinks matters more than most people realize. Look, the reality is, is that Tesla is Musk, Musk is Tesla. The only way that it brings him into the, what I view the AI future, most important chapter in Tesla's history, it's Musk. Wartime CEO. And look, you go about a trillion dollars, that's ultimately hitting all the targets, but you need Musk at the helm. And now it starts, what I think is the most important chapter ever for Tesla, autonomous, robotics. This is going to be the future, what ultimately defines Tesla. And that's why even when it comes to XAI, you want them to have a big ownership stake of XAI. More and more is a physical AI play. It's NVIDIA and Tesla. Now, uh, when you look at Tesla moving forward, um, it does feel like data is the big advantage, right? They're mm -hmm. obviously collecting tons of data when it comes to self-driving cars. Uh, these humanoids, I think a lot of people are looking at like, what is the output of the humanoid? But they are ingesting an insane amount of data. Yep. We recently saw a 1X, uh, which is a private company. They uh, put out, um, my understanding is it's a demo that was uh, remote controlled, right? Kind of, yep. uh, um, but it's got a camera. It's got sensors. Mm -hmm. It is taking in all this information. A human can take over the robot and actually have it do things, right? That, that maybe are like the edge cases. When you start to look at that stuff, is, is this all just a data game? Well, look, 10 million cars in the road. I mean, when you look at Tesla, their biggest advantage, it's data, scale, scope, Musk. Mm -hmm. What separates them above everyone else is that. And I think more and more as the data game plays out, especially in robotics, autonomous. I mean, you can mean 30, 35 cities from an autonomous per perspective. I mean, that that's why you own Tesla. Mm -hmm. I think autonomous alone is worth a trillion dollars. This is a two and I think ultimately three trillion dollar market cap. Now, uh, Elon, if he gets the pay package and he delivers, he'll be the first world's first trillionaire. Yes. Um, it does feel like Elon is probably solving the most amount and the hardest problems in society. Yep. It kind of feels like the guy who solves the most amount and the hardest problems deserves the most amount of money. Is that That's, your take? But, and also go back to 2018, like the pay package that they gave him. Everyone's like, there's no way ever he could hit those targets. Exceed it. And it speaks to, you know, and it's still actually in Delaware court in terms of that battle. Look, this, when you think about who the winners are, NVIDIA, why? Well, think about the role that the godfather of AI Jensen plays. AMD, Lisa Su, Sundar at Google, Nadella, Microsoft, Carp, Palantir. The point is like, it speaks to leaders and why they're so important. Musk right now, wartime CEO. Dan Ives is right that Tesla's real future isn't about building more cars, but about becoming a major force in autonomous systems and robotics. Tesla is the only company with a global fee of cars, constantly feeding its AI systems real world experience at a scale no one else has access to. One of the things that people always misunderstand about Tesla is that they see it as a car company, when in reality, the vehicles are the only distributed system for something much bigger. Every Tesla on the road is a sensor platform, a learning machine, and a training engine feeding an AI model that becomes more capable with every mile driven. No other company in the world has that kind of real-time, real-world pipeline running across different countries, climates, and driving cultures. And this scale gives Tesla diversity. The system learns from crowded cities, quiet suburbs, bad weather, strange road layouts, unpredictable drivers, there's a lot of those, confusing signage, and every kind of driving behavior you can imagine. Companies working with small, tightly controlled fleets simply can't capture that kind of variety because their systems are only trained on specific, limited conditions. Tesla is learning from everything, everywhere, all the time. And I think this is why Dan Ives talks so confidently about Tesla's next chapter. He recognizes a structural advantage that grows automatically as the fleet grows. Every new Tesla delivered strengthens the core model. Every journey strengthens the autonomy system. Every environment the fleet enters expands the model's awareness of edge cases that other companies don't even know exists. There's also a culture advantage that doesn't get enough attention. Tesla's willingness to rebuild systems from scratch when they hit a ceiling. Most companies patch problems because they can't afford to reset their entire stack. Tesla has done two full rewrites of its autonomy system already, something it feels like almost nobody else would attempt, and each rewrite allowed the AI to break through limits that were baked into older designs. This willingness to overhaul instead of optimize the old is a rare asset 
in the industry dominated by incrementalism. This brings us on to the part most people underestimate. Tesla's momentum in AI-driven robotics. Dan also claims that Tesla's robotics program is a massive unlock because the same learning engine that powers autonomy can't power humanoid robots. Optimus is built on the same vision-based AI foundation Tesla has refined through millions of real-world interactions. What makes the Tesla robot different is the brain behind it. Most robotics companies build a machine first, then try to teach it what to do. Tesla approached the problem from the opposite direction. They built a learning system first, an AI that already understands the world visually, spatially, and behaviorally, and then designed a robot around that intelligence. Another major advantage is Tesla's exposure to human environments at scale. The data that powers FSD isn't limited to roads. It captures human motion, body language near new vehicles, object interactions, spatial layouts, and the relationship between people and their surroundings. All of this becomes extremely valuable when training a humanoid robot meant to operate in those same kinds of spaces. A lot, if not all companies lack this exposure entirely. Tesla learns from the full spectrum of human environments, which naturally accelerates the robot's ability to generalize. There's also the industrial learning loop. Unlike startups, Tesla can deploy Optimus into its own factories at any stage of development. This means the robot receives early exposure to repetitive tasks, unpredictable workflows, and human-robot coordination without requiring external partners or lengthy negotiations. These controlled but realistic deployments give Tesla a safe sandbox where the robot can fail, adjust, and improve at a pace other companies simply can't match because they don't control their own large-scale manufacturing ecosystem. It's becoming obvious that humanoid robots are notoriously difficult because human environments weren't designed for machines. But that's exactly why Tesla's approach, built around natural vision and organic learning, gives it a structural advantage. It doesn't need to redesign the world for the robot, it's teaching the robot to handle the world as it already exists. Dan Ives recognized this when he talked about robotics being the next defining chapter. Tesla is building a general intelligence engine that can move from cars to robotics without starting over. That is rare, powerful, and extremely difficult for competitors to replace. Ads are expensive and people don't trust them anymore, but they do trust YouTube. That's why three of our clients now make $100,000 a month for their business from growing a YouTube channel. If you run a business, book a call with me and I'll help you map this out.